What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pixel Perspective. My name is JJ, and I'm here to do a podcast with my buddy Adrian. Adrian, what's going on, man? Hey, JJ. Happy to be here, man. I feel reset and re-energized. You know? Is there any reason why? Do I come off that way? Uh, you do a little bit. Yeah, you seem you seem you got this glow about you. I'm a little more chipper. I just yeah, you know. finished my um vacation to Florida. I was gone for a week, so. Man, I haven't done a vacation in so long. It's one of those things that I don't take enough vacations. I need to get out and reset myself because I get into a slump. I start feeling like uh, burnout and I start feeling just not good. You know, it's just like you need to get away for a while, see some new scenery, have some fun and, you know, then come back to it. And that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm super motivated, super ready to go. Cool. Uh, what are you what are we talking about today? What, whoa, me, whoa, I'm whoa. just I'm just freaking same as always, just working and I'm tired and I game when I can. And my cat yeah. ate a bite of my pizza when I wasn't looking yesterday. And oh my god, just gosh. like it was it was I actually like eat it. So I uh, I uh, so I got um, we had this restaurant out here called uh, Papa Murphy's, which is like yeah. it's take and bake. Yeah. So. I got that and I was preheating the oven and I've been playing games in my basement, which is where I have like my old stuff set up. So I was playing my PS2 down there. Um, and I put the pizza on the counter and this is totally my fault. I put the, the uncooked pizza on the counter um, while I waited for the oven to heat up and I was just waiting for it to get to 425 or whatever it is. And I go downstairs and I, cause I was like trying to get to a save point and playing dot hack. Um, and down there for five minutes or so and like i just hear this thump on the on the kitchen floor above me and i'm like what the hell and in my mind i'm like i I knew what it was i was like i think he was up on the counter (laughs) and i think he just jumped down and i like so i i you know i got to a save point went upstairs and there's this little tear in the side of the plastic on the uh, pizza and he's like as i was walking up the stairs he was walking towards me licking his chops too and I'm like, I'm like, no, you did not. So I get up there and I see it. I'm like, oh yeah. And like, I, you know, I'm a new pet owner, you know, ish. I've, I've had him for a little over a year now, but I've never really had like a pet. So I don't know like what's toxic and what's horrible for cats and that kind of thing. And I immediately start freaking the fuck out. And I'm like, just like, I start like, I grab the spray bottle and I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, like, you know, I hit him once and I, I didn't even hit him. Usually when I spray him, I spray above him in the air and he just knows to run away but I was so angry and it wasn't that I was angry at him. I was just angry at myself because I was so scared and terrified that he had maybe eaten something that was going to hurt him or something like that. Because I've, you know, I've told you all the stories about when I first got him and how I had been, had to go to the vet like so many times yeah. with all the medical issues he was happening. And I was like, I can't do this again, man. I was, I was freaking out. So I sent a friend, a text to my friend who's like been kind of like my de facto coach uh, on, uh, on, on my cat and everything like that. And she knows like, any any question i have she's she knows it right off the bat so she just starts cracking up and she's just like no it's fine it's as long as you got just a little bit and you know and there's no like big chunks of garlic or something like that in there he's totally fine you know my cat sneaks from me all the time it really like it literally looked like just a tiny bit of dough had been ripped up like he just pulled at it with his claws then maybe took like a lick or something and that was it so it wasn't like there was like half the thing missing (laughs) um not like a dog oh my god no dog would have yeah i I have no doubt Um, so i was yeah i you know immediately felt calmer and better and stuff and he still is just sitting there looking smug like he had just gotten away with some well i mean technically he did so but i that little little shit i mm, i was i was so terrified um all of you who have cats are probably laughing at me right now and and, you know but (laughs) man I've been through a lot with this little guy and I just want him to be okay. So I was, I was really yeah. worried, but he's fine. He's been doing good. So um, yeah, uh, that was That's my week. Good. <laughs> um, other than that, I just been uh, playing uh, dot hack um, the original quadrilogy. 
on PS2. Yeah. Um, How far are you into that? So I had originally planned on, because I've beaten one, two, and three when they first came out years ago. And I got into four, but I stopped because one of the things you have to do, you have to get these virus cores, which lets you unlock new dungeons to progress further in the story. In the first three games, you barely have to do that at all. You carry your game through each save file, through each game. Um, and you just you know bring your character and all their stats and equipment and everything. So I had forgotten in the fourth one, the reason I stopped was because it all of a sudden you hit this wall where you are required to do like seven or eight dungeons in a row where you need just a ton of cores that you get easier in the first three games. So like I should have been getting these extra things all along the way and everything like mm -hmm. that. And I didn't the first time I played. So it was just going to take a ton of grinding. I was like, oh God, I didn't want to do it. So I stopped playing the fourth one. I was going to put the fourth one on my list of 20 games for next year um, to beat. And I was like, you know what? I'll take it slow. I'll just play through uh, the, the first one now, maybe the second one, beginning of the year, third one, middle of the year, and then finish at the end of the year next year. So I put in infection, I start playing it 15 hours. I'm done with the game itself and pretty much all the, the extra stuff, like did everything. Wow. <laughs> and it was 15 hours. And I was like, Oh, well, that was, it was nothing and I could I could keep going sure well I'm at the end of game four now because <laughs> I just kept going I'm 60 hours in total play time for all four games I love it um there are some if you follow me on Twitter you saw me you know whine a little bit about uh some of the some of the death mechanics in the game um but overall I'm having a blast with it um I am on, I'm ready for it to be done because it's you know it's been 60 hours but I really really like it and it actually this these games will play a lot into what we're talking about today um, mm -hmm. because of, you know, what they go for now, at least the fourth one, especially. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm really, really enjoying it. I've been playing that and a tiny bit of Genshin impact. Um, oh, really? Uh, yeah. I'm cause I, man, I, my Twitter feed gets freaking flooded with people playing that, that game. Um, and I have a lot of friends that play it too, that tell me you need to get into it. You need to try it. The story's great. You know, it's beautiful and stuff like that. I agree with all that stuff. Uh, my problem is just the, the cell phone like mechanics. And I know, I understand it's a mobile game as well um, of like three, four five stars for items. And you know, that kind of thing. I don't like the upgrading system like that in mobile games. Um, what is that called? Gotcha or something. Mm -hmm. uh i'm not I've, I've never been crazy about that and i'm not even talking about just because you know you can potentially buy stuff and it's pay to win because i know in this game you don't have to do that i just it's just not something i i enjoy um because i it's just too much randomness uh mm -hmm. another friend of mine was like well you played xenoblade 2 um and that has the the same kind of randomness when you're getting the new um the new cores and, and all that stuff and i was like yeah and i that was like my least favorite part of the game was was yeah. the randomness i wanted cosmos yeah. so bad but i didn't want to have to grind and then just hope for a drop you know yeah. that it would it would actually happen so like, i i i'm not crazy about randomness um in those kinds of games so uh i'm it is beautiful though it is gorgeous and i i enjoy it but it's i don't know because of the the that the equipment and leveling up and stuff I'm not 100 sold on it yet um but i think it's i think it's uh more than a solid game it's very very well done and for free it's a no-brainer i say you know everybody give it a shot um right. and then i just been waiting for you to get back into town so uh we can finish up dark souls 3. Finish dark souls yeah <laughs> yeah my uh daughter i'm sure i mentioned this before plays the hell out of out of genshin impact that is her game right yeah. I see. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, I don't think that's Adrian because see on my friends list, your name pop up playing that. I'm like, I don't think that's him though. No, it's it's her, and it's also Owen. Um, hmm. He just recently got into it. I guess okay. her excitement for her games rubs off on her siblings quite a bit. So, <laughs> uh, like with Splatoon, I mean, she was the one who was totally into Splatoon first, and now it's shifted from Splatoon to Genshin Impact, and uh, she's been. <laughs> We installed it. So we had to go through a, a process. She wanted to create her own PSN account mm -hmm. um, on the PlayStation so she could um, unlock. Apparently, you can unlock Alloy or Aloy, Aloy however you pronounce yep. it, from Horizon Zero Dawn yep. on Genshin Impact. And But you have to have a PlayStation account to do so. 
So we, uh, I helped her create an account and um, she installed it. She usually plays it on PC. She installed it and got on and then uh, unlocked uh, Aloy like she wanted to. But I mean, for a solid couple minutes, it was trophy unlocked, trophy unlocked, trophy unlocked. It just kept popping up on screen. She got, she got, I'd say 80% of the trophies unlocked just from all the time she's put in on the PC. And wow. uh, I thought it was crazy. It was like, I knew you played, played this game a lot, but man, you've really like, you've almost platinum this game. If there was, I don't think there's platinum for it, but you could have platinum this game pretty easily. Um, that is, that is pretty sweet. Like as a, uh, as a, as a, somebody who i wouldn't consider myself a trophy hunter but somebody who enjoys getting trophies like when i see yeah. one pop up i'm like oh cool uh final fantasy 7 remake when i yeah same upgraded thing the ps5 me. version and because i had the platinum on the ps4 and just seeing everything come out and just getting a free platinum like that i was like hell yeah okay yeah it was really cool did it count as separate trophies on the ps5 version i guess it does mm -hmm. if it's popping up again yep huh it's, it does get a little annoying though it just it doesn't ever seem to stop it just keeps, well yeah especially keeps with a game that has a lot of them yeah for sure yeah. yeah um yeah so while i was gone on vacation we went to destin florida and we went there the day before hurricane ida is it ida or ira ida I whatever think. it is the the new hurricane just hit so yeah um we were on the outskirts of that um because it hit new orleans and louisiana we're about four hours away from there so we got the outskirts of it and for the first half of the week that we were there we couldn't even go in the water it was because of the rip current and uh it was just unsafe and it was raining and storming the whole time that kind of sucked um i will admit but it was cool at the same time i'd never really experienced a hurricane before at least on the outskirts of it so that was kind of, kind of kind of cool yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we got to we got to do that, and and you know we spent some time indoors. We luckily though we rented a beach house, went in with the family, and we all got a like a really nice beach house. So yeah, um, we weren't really missing out on anything. So I, I was able to get some Switch game time in, and I finally finished Xenoblade Chronicles Two: Torna, the Golden oh, Country. Okay, all right. Did it make you want to go back and play Xenoblade Chronicles Two? Um, well, I started playing it when you started playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you, give you an idea of how long it takes me to get through games. When did you finish that game? Like two months ago? Yeah, at least. Yeah. So I started it <laughs> at the same time as you, and I'm just now finishing it. But there is reason why. I mean, when a game starts to get boring to me, I don't play it as much. You but don't I'll even still have to come use back that to as a reason why. You have a family, dude. You have responsibilities and stuff. Like it's just me well, living alone with my cat. Like it's I don't have a, like I'm gonna finish games quicker. That's just the way it's gonna work out. Right. But yeah, I mean, and even still, like if I have time to play a game, um, if I'm not in the mood to play Xenoblade, I'm gonna play something else, you know, and Fair that's enough. just how yeah. how my game time goes. I feel like I could finish it faster if I was able to stay engaged a little more. Um, and I actually, I kind of want to get your opinion on this because first of all, let me just say, I loved Torna. I thought it was an amazing game. Um, I thought so too. Yeah. But there is a, it forces you to do side quests. There's a point in the game where you have to have a community level of four. And what that means is you have to do side quests for NPCs in the game in order to gain their trust in their community, this community level. Um, I don't even know what, that, what the hell that means. It's just a gimmick to make you do side quests. The problem that I had was I was at, I was at the place in the game right before you go fight the final boss, right before... You know, you already fought him once and then he does the typical JRPG thing and runs away and forces you to come chase after him for that yep. final climactic battle. But before you can do that, you need to have a community level of, of four. And my community level was two. So I had to do, oh my gosh, man. I had to do probably 30 some odd side quests 
before I could even go fight him. Yeah. I was so irritated about that. Um, but I, I did it. I stuck it out. I didn't run into that um, mainly because I did like I, if I had side stuff, I always did the side stuff before moving on with the main story. I should have. So I did it as I was going along with it. I'm not. I, I don't disagree with you though. I think that is a bad philosophy to have uh, in games because I think there is a place for somebody who just wants to go in and just play the main story right. and you know stick to that and 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 have fun with it. I don't think you should be forced to do other content if you don't want to. Um, yeah, totally. I, I enjoyed it, but I yeah no I I, I don't think that that's uh, a good philosophy to have. Well, and I know design. I understand why they did it. You know, it, it's an expansion. It's just, and it's yeah. an additional part of the game. And it's not that long. The story by itself is not that long. So in order for them to pad out the experience, they force you to do these side quests. The problem that I have with the side quests, though, is that a lot of them, I, okay, I didn't understand completely how to do some of the quests until <laughs> later on in the game. They don't fully explain to you how some of the quests, some of them are straightforward. Some of them are, you select it, make it active, and then it'll yeah. place a little marker on your map. You go there, do it, you're done. But then there's other quests that require you to craft certain things or I remember that. Um, yeah. acquire yeah, acquire certain materials that I have no idea where I'm supposed to go to acquire these materials. Um, and then there's a lot of those. And uh, so those are the ones that um, kind of put a damper on the experience. Also, like they were all fetch quests. Almost all of them were fetch quests. And the storyline, it got to the point where I didn't even care what the side quest was. I would just pop, 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 pop through all the top I dialogue. Didn't I didn't even read yep. it. It, it. And it was just like such a waste of time. But the payoff was great because that final battle, that final moment of the story, the storyline in Torna is amazing. Like, I like the as, cast in that game better than the original uh, I love the cast in that game. Blazer. And I think I've mentioned it before. Adam is an amazing character. I, I think he's a better like protagonist, even though he wasn't the main protagonist. I thought he was a better protagonist than um, Rex was in the original Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yeah. Um, he was the original wielder of um, the Aegis Mithra. And so you get to see like how she, how Mithra used to be. Because I played playing the first or Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you know the characters from that, but then you get to see them how they were before the events of the second game. And no. this is as far as prequels go, prequels are usually hit or miss. This is a this is probably one of the best prequels I've ever played. Um, just in terms of like I already knew what the events were that were gonna happen in that game, but it was still <laughs> fun to experience that. It was the best part of it was experiencing the characters getting to know yep. the characters Agreed. better so at the end of the game and i'm not going to spoil anything but when you finally beat that final boss and you see all the things that happen that kind of follow into xenoblade chronicles 2 yeah. it's it's a little bit emotional you know it kind of it, it really hits the spot that it needs to hit um i don't know i loved it it, it, it sent me down a uh a, a wormhole of uh, watching different videos on YouTube about the storyline and the characters did, and everything. And did you say wormhole or wormhole? Uh, well, I was trying to say warm wormhole wormhole wormhole. Uh, Hold on a second. Nope. How do I say it? I say worm. I don't know. I, I don't worm. know what you're trying to say. That's why I'm asking. Don't wormhole. say wormhole. That sounds terrible. Wormhole. 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 <laughs> No, not warm. Did I say warm? warm that's that's warm. what it sounded like. Oh my god! <laughs> don't tell me you don't like the warm home. I am not even going to respond to this right now. I don't like where this conversation is going. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Did you did um, you want to play uh, Xenoblade Two again right afterwards? Yes, I did. I did. As soon as I, I finished, I was like, I kind of want to go back and play the first one, the the other one again. I I do. Yeah. Like, I want to go back. Um, not necessarily play through this. Actually, I kind of do want to play this storyline again because it's been a few years and I don't recall every little detail. But now being able to make some connections would be kind of cool. Were you able to figure out the uh, the special moves this time? Um, yes. That's a problem that I have with these Xenoblade games. 
I don't fully understand the mechanics of yeah. anything until <laughs> it's it's time to beat the game, right? Like um, the whole quest thing. Oh, 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 you know the 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 uh, mechanic where you um, you upgrade skill levels to your blades and it's got mm-hmm. that tree. This, yeah, it's got these different arches. I never understood how to unlock those, and it was always irritating to me when I would go try to unlock a chest. You. Well, I didn't get it. You, I didn't yeah, get all it. You all you have to do like, is you move the uh, the cursor over them, and it says I know that now. seven times or to, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, but I didn't know that <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Um, and it was super annoying to go unlock it, try to unlock a chest, and I would never have the skill level required to do it, and. Uh, but then after I played for a little bit and understood the mechanics a little bit better, I was able to go back in and understand, oh, that's what that means. I have to go find this or I have to put this certain item in my character's pouch in order for them to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's just, I think there's too much there in these games that I don't think is fully, either it's not explained well or it's not implemented well. And I think that's the problem that I have with the Xenoblade games. I would say not explained general. well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm fine with I mean, that was my... it, but I, I agree. Because there's I had I had the internet pulled up next to me the whole time I was playing because I, like you said, on those quests where you had to like uh, uh, craft certain things and stuff, I didn't know where to find all the ingredients for those. I had no idea. So I would just look yeah. up, okay, well, I know I need this. Where can I find that and stuff? So, yeah. Let me ask you if you remember. Um, so the main battle mechanic in this game is using elemental attacks and mm-hmm. then doing a combo attack with all your characters to break those elements using mm-hmm. the opposite element kind of like pokemon in a way that's um, the same thing in xenoblade too okay that's what i was going to ask you is that the same mechanic that i could never figure it out and in, in yep, that's why team? i asked i was like could you get it in this one yeah um, i got yeah, it this time thing. and i i fully understood it this time i still think though um that it's not a great system because i agree the elements it's not it's not made clear to me what elements are opposite of they should have they should have like a little chart like on the screen when that's going on right to tell you what the opposites are yeah i was thinking the same thing the whole time yeah okay agreed well it it uh it does help you somewhat whenever you're starting that chain attack the ones that you can burst will glow and so you have to go through and figure out of the three attacks what which one is the opposite of that it's a guessing game, but you know, I, I still managed to do it. Um, the fight, the final boss, boss battle though, was a huge pain for me. <laughs> I was even over leveled, and I still had a hard time with it. Um, it took me four tries to beat him, oh, and wow. it was that is a long bat. That is a long boss battle. So I did it twice one night, put it away, tried again the next morning. It always happens that way. I'll beat it the next morning, um, but. Uh, after beating that, yeah, like I said, it was just, it's a great game. I, I, I want, I see now like the connections with Xenogears and like the storytelling and the character building in Xenogears or, or in Xenoblade, I think is, is, is just as well as Xenogears was doing, you know, 20 some odd years ago. Um, I just like seeing it's unique to play games, at least now RPGs that really do a good job at building characters and telling sure. a good story, an interesting story. And I think the Xenoblade games do a phenomenal job at it. They really do. Yeah. It's got me wanting to go back and play uh, uh, Xenosaga. We we need that remaster. We do. Like we need a remaster. Into... Something. I just yeah. I know as soon as I start it on PS2, they're going to announce it or something. <laughs> the other thing is i was thinking that um i put in you know that steam link or whatever it's called the little hand the handheld steam machine yeah i went ahead and reserved one but i can't get one until 2022 at least it said i'm thinking when i get that thing i'm going to run a ps2 emulator on it and then play through the xeno saga series that way i have no I'm interest up. whatsoever in getting that really i'm only I, I interested mean, in it I'm like, A, have you seen what it looks like? The it's, layout. It's ugly. Yeah, it's like, ugly. Where the where the um, the D-pad is, like that's all the way in the corner. It looks really awkward. 
Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it's a Steam product. So like Steam is great at digital stuff, but their physical stuff has never done that spectacularly. I got, when they came out with uh, the Steam Link, um, yeah. I thing actually is bought garbage. it for $5. Me too. <laughs> so I still haven't used it. Uh, from what I understand, it works great. As you know, as long it as you're playing older games, great. obviously. Oh, really? Because right, I've, I've heard it works great as long as you've got a wired connection. Oh, that's why. I didn't have it wired. I have it wireless. Mm-hmm. Wireless sucks. It's too laggy. <laughs> uh, um, it might depend on the game you're playing, too. If you're playing something new. Yeah. Because it's not... It's Well, not, I mean, it seems to be... Well, and I think having a wired connection is going to be the better way to play it because it is just it's just streaming from your PC. Right. Um. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't care for it. it. I played it once, and then I tried it again, and I haven't touched it since. But I'm I'm hopeful for this new handheld system. Um, I'm a sucker for handhelds, as as you well know. Um, and the idea or the being able to play some of my emulators, such as the PS2 emulator um, and others that you can't play on on handheld systems, um, is really really enticing for me. So I think. If I were to get this thing and put a PS2 emulator on it, I, it would it would help me work through some of those PS2 games that I want to get back to that sure. are just difficult for me to to sit down and play. So, cool. That's what I'm hoping for. It looks cool. Um, I've been playing a few other things, but nothing noteworthy. Xenoblade's been kind of the the main thing. I did start No More Heroes. Uh, no more heroes three looks pretty cool so i want to get through the first two games before i play it i've never played them have you played them no interest no really Mm-mm. i played uh i beat the first boss last night um and so far so good i like it i like the quirkiness i like the i like the uh the odd weirdness of this game it's it, it's it's going well for me so i want to see it through all right. Well, we're uh, <laughs> almost thirty minutes in. We haven't even talked about uh, our topic yet. But that's what okay. is our? I was topic wanting tonight? to talk to Zemo about. Our topic is game investment. Like, I don't even know how to talk about video games our as feelings. an investment. As an investment. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's this is all over the news lately. It's just for multitude yeah. of different reasons. Um. Basically, what what we're wanting to talk, or what what is, let me gather my thoughts. Sorry, what what is interesting to me is I'm a collector. You're a collector. I've I've been into this stuff for a long time. Um, prices are just getting out of hand lately, and um, there's just there's a multitude of different reasons for that. Uh, but I think one of the main reasons are people buying into video games as an investment. And not necessarily to collect, but to treat as if it were a stock, you know, some sort of tradable commodity that uh, can make them more money. Um, And that has come about within the past two years, I'd say, with with game grading. Um, And game grading has been around for a while, but it's only really kicked up steam over the past two years. And uh, with... uh, Wada Games grading sealed games and them jacking up the market to make these games that were once worth only, you know, maybe a, a few hundred or a few thousand now worth a million or a few hundred thousand. It's as a result, um, it's getting mainstream media attention and people are thinking that these that video games in general are an investment opportunity. And I think that has a huge impact on game prices in general and what we've seen over the past two years with game prices, not just with sealed games, but just any game. Um, But I I guess based upon what you've been witnessing, um, what are your thoughts on what's going on with games as investments? Um, Okay, so... I think you and I are going to fall on the same page as far as this bubble that we're seeing right now um, is a bad thing, but I think it's going to be for different reasons. Um, Okay. Me for one, if Nintendo, Sony, 
Microsoft, anybody were to say, hey, we're going to release our entire library, all of our games that we have had in the past, you know, from like two consoles uh, ago and prior, we're going to just put them on our uh, uh, virtual consoles or, you know, uh, PS Now, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can, even if they charge for them, like, you know, you pay, you know, five bucks a game or, or, you know, even 10 bucks a game, you know, whatever. If they did that with their entire library and everything, I wouldn't even care. I would not care if there was this huge bubble, would not bother me in the slightest because I don't collect to make money. I don't collect Mm -hmm. things because they're rare. I don't collect video games because I see one that I know is worth a lot and I'm going to hold on to it so I can sell it later on. You know me, I don't, I, I typically don't sell anything. And if I do, it's, it's, there's a good reason behind it. Like I'm getting something else out of it or something like that. Um, for me, it's about robbing people of the chance to play those games. Um, mm-hmm. I will only buy games for my collection that I want to play. You know, if I get a game that I don't want to play, and believe me, I, I you, if you've seen my collection videos on my on my YouTube channel, Game Room Revival, uh, <laughs> you will you will know for sure that I have plenty of games that I've never touched, uh, that I don't know anything about. Um, that kind of thing. But those were all games that either came in like a massive lot or that I got for a super cheap price. And there was other stuff in there that I really wanted. And if I figured it was worth it to get everything together or it was something that I saw like on, in a clearance bin at Walmart or something like that, where I, you know, I got it for like two, three, four, five dollars a game. Um, and I just couldn't say no to, you know, five dollars a game is great no matter where you go. Um, so for me, it's it's more about robbing those people of the opportunity to play those games, because in a lot of cases, with these prices getting so high up, a lot of those older games, the only way you can play them is buying them physically and, and getting to play them on the older consoles and stuff like that. And I, I don't, I know there's emulation and all that stuff like that, but there's plenty of people that don't know how to do that. Don't know, don't have access to it. Don't have the ability to set something like that up. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's overly complicated. I know it's not, but you know, to a lot of people, it, it is. can be. Yeah, yeah can absolutely. Be. Um, it's it so I, I, for me I don't care as long as there's still a way for more people to be able to play these older games. The reason I don't like it is because it robs people of that opportunity um, to experience these old classics, uh, these old games that they were like, you know what? I remember my friend playing that as a kid, and I always wanted to try it, but you know, I, I guess I miss my chance now because it goes for you know several hundred dollars or or more, um, and yeah. I just don't have that kind of cash to throw around to play this one game that I want to try out when these companies could just be like, Hey, digital library, boom, here you go. Right. Um, I would honestly like, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I would probably sell off quite a bit of my collection if they released a lot of this stuff digitally. Really? Um, really? Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I love having games. I love going into my basement and seeing the whole, the whole lineup and layout and everything like that. But it's, it's, it's just about the experiences for me. It's not necessarily about having, I love having the physical thing and I love being able to flip through the instruction manuals and, and hold these games and everything like that. But more than anything else, it is about the, the experiences with that. Um, so mm-hmm. I would be more than willing to forego and let those prices skyrocket and, you know, the rich can get richer and do what they want to do. It doesn't matter as long as people still have the opportunity to play these games in some fashion that is affordable and, uh, you know, uh, they're able to, to get to it. So, yeah. You know, um, your response does not surprise me in the slightest. I think I think I knew that um, just based upon discussions that we've had in the past, and I know your viewpoint on that. Um, you know, I I'm, I got into collecting. My my viewpoint is a little bit different than yours, and and I got into collecting because the same reason. I wanted to experience these games that I didn't get to experience before in the past. I wanted to play them. Um, I want, I still do. I mean, I, that, that has not changed. Um, but I would be lying to myself if I didn't, if I said I wasn't into collecting rarity or sure. expensive games or things like that. That's just something that I'm into. And the funny thing is, is I, I have absolutely no intentions on selling any of my stuff at all. Like it, it's just, it's to me, it's the satisfaction of knowing that I have something that I was able to attain at a lower price You're proud that is it. now worth yeah. more. I'm proud of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, to me, it's the excitement of knowing I got in early. Um, I've got a game, you know, that's worth, you know, uh, 
Earthbound, for instance, sitting up there. That's a that's a at least a few thousand dollar game, and I got it for a few hundred dollars. You know, and I'm I'm proud of that. So now I get to have it and experience it. I have no intentions of selling it. Perfect example it just happened recently with you and I. Um, I had put out my review for Fantasy Star Four, and <laughs> then you mentioned like a couple of days later, hey, you know, my my honey hole uh, yeah. has the uh, <laughs> guy has a copy of it. You know, it's a couple hundred bucks or whatever. You know, you want me to go go check it out? And I was like, yeah. I just don't have that much money to spend on something like that when I already have the ability to play it. I'm, I'm perfectly right. happy playing it on my PS4. But you then had a bunch of stuff you traded in and you were able to actually get it. So you are able to actually like look at that on your shelf. And that's a, it's a freaking phenomenal condition too. Like it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, would I love I to have it? it Absolutely. But at the same time, I, again, like for me, I will forego spending $400 if I can still play it, you yeah. know, on a, 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 you know, Sega classics or something like that. So, and that literally right. just happened within the last like month. That's yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great example of what's going on here. And the thing is, is like, I do like to collect. I consider myself a collector um, every bit as much as a gamer, like every bit as much. To me, it is just as fun, if not more fun at times, to find these games, to acquire these games, to uh, you know display these games. That to me is is so thrilling and exciting, and I, I I love the hell out of it. So, whenever I see this going on, um, this investor um, market or whatever, like people investing in video games, especially the sealed games. Um, and, and jacking up the prices, it really, it upsets me because it, it starts to put these games outside of my financial reach. And you've got a bunch of people coming in um, who aren't, who aren't collectors. They're not collectors. They, they, they might, they don't really even care about video games. Most of them, they're looking at these as strictly as an investment opportunity. And, you know, it, it, it sucks. It sucks for people like me who have been in this hobby for years and years and years and love it. And, you know, and now it's, it's becoming something that isn't as easy for us to acquire anymore. Um, it just, it, it feels like somebody is taking away, um, taking my hobby away from me, you know, making it unattainable. And it just, it sucks. I hate it. Um, you know, for, for, for you saying like you, you like knowing you have things that are, that are worth a lot or that are extremely rare and that kind of thing. You don't, you, you don't talk about your collection in that way though. When you talk about your collection, you're more focused on like how you got the games and the uh, like, man, I, you know, found this dude's random Facebook post, lived out in a farm in the middle of nowhere. And I had to leave work early to go. Like you're more into like acquiring them and stuff like that, rather than like, I, skipping all that and just being like this game is worth seven hundred dollars and i got it for 20 you know because that's that's a boring story it's dumb nobody gives a crap right um so while yeah i mean you're you're yeah you like you said you're you're into you know getting the rare stuff and that kind of thing i i i just want to make sure that that people understand like you're not you're not somebody who's just doing it because they know because you know eventually it's going to just go up in price or or you think right. you're going to get something out of it or something like that like you you genuinely it's about the hunt more than anything else for you exactly there are trophy pieces when you buy yeah. those more expensive games or find those more expensive pieces um it's a perfect example like absolute perfect example it's like pokemon you have all these pokemon that you can collect a lot of them you don't really care about you just want to collect them but those legendaries or those starters, you know, or those other, those shiny Pokemon, those are the ones that you care about. Those are the ones that you show off. Those are the ones that you use and you're proud of. It's the same thing with collecting anything, really. You you want those pieces in your collection to be proud of, to show off. Say, hey, look, Earthbound, you say? I have a complete inbox copy right here, you know? And, and it doesn't, I say that as if I'm bragging to people all the time and I don't. Like, it, not very many people know that I have this, but to me, it's as a personal goal of mine, as a personal like accomplishment of mine, knowing that I have these, these trophies is, is good enough for me. That's all I care about. Like, I like having them. Um, and it's just, 
I don't collect everything. I don't collect games out of rarity. I collect them based upon a set, you know, rules that I've given myself. So like, uh, for example, I collect RPGs. I collect horror games. I collect first party Nintendo titles, uh, you know, things like that, or titles or games that mean something to me from my childhood, whether it's a game that I used to own and don't anymore, or a game that I used to play with a friend and don't have access to anymore, or specific, um, specific, uh, not uh, series. Um, yeah. What am I trying to say here? Like, like Pokemon or, or, or Mega Man or Ninja Turtles or Final Fantasy. You know, yeah. stuff like that is like completing a set. Like I've got that that set of GBA Final Fantasy games, Mad. a complete in box. Mad, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 like giving yourself a set of goals and accomplishing those goals. It's like those short little bursts of yeah enjoyment I get from doing that, from completing completing that small sure. little set that means something to me. You know, and everybody's collection is different. You're going to have pieces in your collection that mean something to you, but don't really mean anything to anybody else. That to me is the fun part of it. Yep. But I mean, when we're talking about games as investments, um, I, I still think though, at some point in time, if this, if my collection were to reach a certain amount of money and I can't even tell you what that amount would be because right. I don't know, would I consider selling it? Probably. You know, it, it's, it's something that crosses my mind every now and then, but then I get the idea, like if I were to sell it, um, the fear of regret holds me yep. back from selling. Exactly. So, yep. especially I if don't it know. is one of those games that means the world to you and yeah. you get rid of it. And then all of a sudden you're like, I, even if I do buy back, like in my case, my uh, complete in box Final Fantasy three. I was super happy to get all that and have it and everything like that. Now, um, if that, like, let's say totally unrealistic, but let's say that eventually shoots up to like five grand for that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I have my cart on the inside of it. Even if I sold that thing as is, and I got five grand out of it and that's, you know, just made back what I put into it by, you know, a ridiculous amount. I would still be thinking to myself, like, if I regret this, yes, I could potentially just buy another copy and have it again, but it won't be my copy. Right. Like it'll, it'll, it won't be the one that I grew up with. It won't be the one that I got attached to that, you know, became mm -hmm. my favorite game, that kind of thing. Um, there's just with something your game about saves being, on it. Right. There's just something about it being in your collection that makes it yours. Um, that when you let go of it, getting a duplicate just doesn't feel the same way and right. so it like doubles the regret almost uh yeah. in that situation um and it's 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 when you're an emotional sap like me that's a really really tough thing to do uh mm -hmm. so i i tend to i mean if you watch any of my collection videos you know that even the games that are i don't know anything about i still will have a tiny bit of a story maybe how i got it or like right you know i'll talk about it a little bit just because i my collection genuinely does mean something to me um, like I said, in a lot of cases though, if I had the opportunity to just get these games online, yeah, I might, I might get rid of, you know, a big chunk of it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and it's, what's weird to me is like, I get, I get just as much enjoyment out of picking the box off the shelf, looking at it, looking through, flipping through the manual as I do actually playing the game. And I know that sounds odd to a lot of people because it sounds odd to my wife. Like uh, when I tell her, like I get, I get pleasure out of just out of looking at these things. I, I, it brings me joy. I don't know why I can't explain it. I'm a visual person and it, that's all I need. And uh, you know, some people don't get that, but that's just, I think that's just a quality of mind that other people have. I mean, I'm, I know I'm not the only one who feels that way, but right. it's just something that uh, it's something that I enjoy. Um, but I don't know about you. I mean, you do get that same feeling from having a physical version versus a digital oh, you, you don't get me? that with yeah. digital yeah no absolutely it's it's you know it's it's more so with the games that do like i said the final fantasy 3 thing um mm -hmm. it's it's more so with those kinds of games um so specific games that are very relevant to you and your memories and your nostalgia yes 
you'll see me, you'll see my eyes light up when I'm looking through my Super Nintendo collection or my Nintendo <laughs> collection. Um, yeah. When I have way more PS4 games, but I, there's no instruction manuals. They're all new. The cover art's all just like pictures instead of like hand-drawn artwork. And like, it's, it's very different uh, when I look at different parts of my collection. Um, you know, that's a big part of nostalgia, which I totally understand. Yep. Um, but it, yeah, I, I, I definitely get that way. Absolutely. I loved, I, that's, I, you know, I say that all the time on my channel is like, I miss not being able to buy a new game and crack open the instruction manual and start reading about the world, start reading character bios, that kind of thing. What abilities am I going to use? What kind of items am I going to run into? Um, I, it's, I, I hate that. It's so frustrating that that's not there anymore. And it's heartbreaking um, yeah. because those older games, like it, it was, it was like an appetizer before actually getting into the main course uh, when you would get those games. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just, I miss that so much. So yeah, having those, those old uh, complete in box games and that kind of thing is great. And it, it, like you said, you know, my eyes light up anytime I pull a box off the shelf and just look at the back, start reading the description, opening it up, look at the manual, flipping through the pages. Oh yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to switch gears here just a little bit. Cause I want to talk about something that uh, is kind of is, well, it's very relevant to what's going on right now um, with, with game grading in general and investing in video games and the market and what it's doing. Um, I already kind of know your feelings, probably the same as mine as what I've already mentioned about game grading in general and selling these games for ridiculous amounts of money. Um, but it, it, there is a video that I showed you earlier today that uh, with information coming out that uh, there's absolutely some market manipulation going on. And, and it's no, it comes as no surprise to anybody. Um, if you've been following this stuff at all, um, there is manipulation going on in the market that, that th these games selling for hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars are not, they're not being bought and sold by um, just regular collectors or anything right. like that. They're being bought and sold by people who are directly involved with these companies that grade them and sell them. So it's in their best interest to try to jack up the prices on these games to make the games that they already own more valuable, therefore uh, making more money on, the, on, their, on their games when they sell. Um, what that's doing right now is, is creating a bubble. And, you know, there, man, I've been collecting for, I've been collecting for almost 10 years. Uh, well, I've been collecting for a long time, but like seriously, seriously collecting for almost 10 years. And there's always talk of a bubble. Always. There's always somebody, some speculation on, oh, this is the bubble. Once the bubble bursts, you know, everything is yeah. going to go back down. Um, I've never really seen evidence of a bubble until now. Like there is, when you have artificial inflation of, of an item, such as these sealed games, um, you're going to have a lot of people who aren't into the hobby, who aren't, who are buying it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And you know, when you buy, when you have a ton of people buying up these games um, and then not having, and then not having people who will, will purchase them from them, you know, uh, then you're going to have a, a, an overabundance of, of games that you're going to have to take losses on. And the bubble is going to, to burst and it's going to come sooner than later, I think. Uh, yeah, not only that, but it's also, so like, there are games that, from what I understand, WADA doesn't announce like how many copies of something they've graded or how many copies there are in circulation that they know of. Um, Population so they report. Could, they could take a game that, you know, could be a $5 game now and yeah. they could potentially like find a box copy, shoot it up through the roof, um, yeah. say it's worth something. And then all of a sudden other people start like to try and, you know, capitalize on that. They'll start selling their loose copies for even more yeah. and more and more and more. And then eventually like it, it just becomes a trading game between people who are just trying to make money rather than actual collectors because the collectors, the real collectors are going to look at that and be like, that game is $5. Like what? Yeah. There's so many of them out there. But then you have new people who aren't into it, who want to get into collecting, who want to get into the hobby, seeing it at these prices, they don't know that necessarily. And so right. they're going to get screwed when it does finally come back down and all of a sudden the game that they just spent, you know, 60 bucks on 
comes down and it's now all of a sudden four they're just like what the <laughs> hell happened like i lost all my you know and stuff and I, I again that we talked earlier about how it's not necessarily about the money and that kind of thing but when you're talking about like how many video games there are out there and robbing people yeah. that much like that's what it is it's a robbery 100 uh, percent i i it's so frustrating and so sad to see because it's such a such a fun uh hobby to get into and especially right. when you find other people who are into it as well and you talk to them about it you have a good time and, and you just bs about it and, and talk about the games you have the games you have memories with uh get good stories about how you found them um deals you got that kind of thing going to conventions and everything that all just kind of gets ruined because it gets spoiled mm-hmm. by these just rich people trying to make more Greedy. money and getting richer yeah and and it's it's just like like i'm not going to go to a convention and see one of these guys who who you know bought the million and a half mario boxed right. uh and strike up a conversation with him because he's not going to know squat other than he just made a killing off of this you know one game um it's 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 so frustrating uh and i feel really really bad for people who, who are just now getting into collecting um, mm-hmm. I think it is going to burst. I, I have no doubt of that for sure. Um, so I would say, wait <laughs> uh, a little bit. I can't, I couldn't tell you how long I have no idea. Cause right. I don't know how this works, like the insides and inside and out and all that stuff. But, uh, I can tell you that it's just, it's prices are inflated right now. Um, it's not a great time to get into collecting and games. And as, as an investment, I definitely wouldn't buy games now to expect to sell them at a you know huge increase later right. on um, there's just no way you're going to know when there's people behind the scenes you know i sound like a conspiracy theorist but i mean there's paper trails to prove it um people like jacking the prices up uh and uh and and, and doing this on purpose so right yeah absolutely i agree 100 percent. and honestly this bubble um when it does burst so i do think i do think that game grading and collecting and people investing in, in gaming is is a natural it's a natural thing to happen sure. yeah. with something like this i mean it happens with every collectible you look at comic books look we at have had great cards exactly yeah and yeah. and all of these different things that people use uh, or collect and you know they trade or they sell to buy something else that they want to add to their collection it's been going on for years for different types of medium it only makes sense that it starts to happen with video games now um the only thing is with this with this bubble like i do think i do think i would honestly i would like to see uh wada go away like i don't i don't like the practices that they are doing to manipulate the market um, so the, the bubble, I think what's going on with the bubble is, is prices are going to go back down, but they're going to go back down to like prices from two years, three years ago, not necessarily prices from five to 10 years ago. Um, just because I think grading and, and, and collectability of video games is, is still a legitimate thing. They were all always going to increase anyway, but just right. not at like exactly. the freaking rate we've seen over the last couple of years. Exactly. I mean, these are, these are products that are no longer produced. Yeah. So of course they're going to be desirable and, you know, people are still going to want to acquire them. So don't, don't go into this thinking, oh, the bubble's going to burst. I'm like, I could pay five bucks for, you know, a, a, what used to be a $200 game. No, that's not, that's not going to ever be the case. Um, but I will be glad to burst. It might put some market correction in video game pricing in general and, yeah. and hopefully keep away these big time investors or at least keep a lot of them away. We'll see what happens. But I, I don't think this is going to last very long. I, my my, after this video came out, I, I if if more bigger um, agency or not agencies like companies get involved with this, um, there could be a quicker action taken. Meaning, I think that the 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 bubble could burst. You know, within a year. I'd say, or two years. I don't think Quickly. companies are going to have anything to do with it. It's going to be like independent YouTubers and uh, collectors well, about, and that kind of stuff. What about the FTC or something like that? Um, if they were to get involved? Well, considering the fact that these people aren't technically doing anything wrong, there's no laws that they're breaking or anything like that. It's just really a dick move that they're doing. Well, they are. Um, when you consider... Um, not disclosing 
information such as uh, when you when they make a purchase and not disclosing that they are directly involved with WADA or directly involved with Heritage. Um, is that something they're required they, to do? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There, that is something that of all everything. Yeah, you're you're right. Everything is shady and wrong, but. As far as illegal activity goes, I think that's kind of the one thing that could probably be brought up and they could be sued for, you know. Even so, they could still just find a way around that. All they do is, I mean, they're they're already creating shell corporations to be like, hey, this company paid for that. I didn't do it. Well, yeah, but you own that company. Yeah, but I didn't put my money in to buy that specifically. You can't prove it. It's all that company that paid for it. You know, I can't, I have no control over what they do. I'm just an investor, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all BS. So well, I'm I don't, curious I don't. to see. I, I think there's still more information to come out too, though. Sure. Um, I definitely think there is, and and once that does, and once it gets the um, eyes of the the trade commission or whatever, then I do think something is going to happen. Um, Hope so. Yeah, I don't know. I think it'll happen quicker quicker than than later. Definitely. Hope anyway. So. Um. That's all I got to say really on that. You know, I think we've shared our our, our opinions on the matter and where or we just stand release your stuff that. digitally, guys. Come on. That's that's all I'm you need to do. You'll, you'll, do. you'll make JJ okay. happy. Very much so. Yeah. I'd be <laughs> thrilled. Kidding me? Yeah. Well, even <sighs> like uh with with newer stuff, you know, uh I'm into really into collecting switch games right now. I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned that before, but I've got an addiction to <laughs> The they look Switch. great on a shelf man i They're love them and uh, the great looking boxes the, the biggest reason though is because they keep releasing all these fantastic rpgs on the switch i i just i can't help myself <laughs> i gotta have them you know um it's still fun so even if the older games are harder to acquire i can still get the newer games and be happy with that i think yeah it's not like we have a shortage of things to play exactly so um any closing thoughts uh put pressure on make them don't don't pay these ridiculous prices if you're somebody who's rich and you're like right. watching this and stuff like that know that you are only making things worse on other people if you are uh paying these insane prices do research ask another yeah. collector ask somebody who has you know been around the ringer and and, and is that even the, the saying i don't even know uh been around the block it's uh or and, down uh, the wormhole or the wormhole uh <laughs> um just just do some research um ask around and hell talk to adrian or myself adrian probably be a better resource quite frankly uh but i, I mean you know we will we're willing to talk about this stuff to anybody and, and you know reach out to us on twitter or whatnot uh or just you know if you know somebody who is a collector and and follows the uh, the market closely and talk to them see you know like why is this happening what the heck because i guarantee you their first reaction is gonna be like dude I don't, what the, like, yeah, everybody's just kind of like, what the hell is happening? Cause this isn't, this is not how it was for a long time. Yeah. It used to be just a fun hobby that everybody could get, could get into. And now it's turned into just another cash grab for people who already have money. Um, it's, yeah. it's frustrating. You know, it, it sucks too. One, one, one thing I just remembered, I was talking to a guy uh, who's not into video gaming or collecting at all yet. He knew what was going on with collecting market and that mario that sold for 1.5 million and he's talking to me about it and he's like yeah it's just that's that's just what's gonna happen that's how it always happens and i was like dude you don't understand this is that's not the natural it didn't happen naturally that happened on purpose and i tried to explain it to him and he had it set that no nope, that's that's what it, way it goes because you know that's the way it always goes and it's like it, it is you're right but it's also happening artificially and it's going to uh, correct itself sooner than later so i don't know it's kind of funny to that people who aren't even into the hobby at all are, are are witnessing what's going on and formulating their own opinions on it problem is that even correcting itself is still it's all it's going to do is hurt people who are trying to invest now if you True. weren't already invested you're you're gonna get screwed um True. it's it's because it's you know it's gonna it's gonna crash but it's not going to crash to the point where it was like Adrian said, the prices that it were before two years ago, prices are still going to be higher than they were. They're just not right. going to be, you know, a million and a half for one game, that kind of a thing. Um, so just be careful, do your research, ask around um, only buy, 
right? Quite frankly, only buy what you like. Just don't, don't, don't. The topic was gaming as an investment. I would not use gaming as an investment, quite frankly, not as like, 100%. I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to like have a game and you want to just like something you love that you want to hang on to, and you hope that one day it, you know, sells for a whole bunch of money, you hang on to it because you've had it for a long time. Great. More power to you. What I'm saying is don't go buying a bunch of games, expecting them to rise in value. And then you get a huge return somewhere down the line. Cause chances right. are that is not going to happen that way. Um, it could, I could be completely wrong. You might, Come rich off it? Absolutely. Anything's possible, for sure. But chances are, no, not the case. So just be careful. Be very careful. Yeah. 100% agree. And if you take our advice and end up losing out on a bunch of money because you didn't buy games, <laughs> sorry. No, I honestly 100% agree with you, and that's not going to happen. It really won't happen. Buying games is an investment right now is definitely a bad idea. You would have had to been buying these games even just a couple of years ago to make to make money off of them. But right now, no. Yep, 100%. 100%. You got right. any final thoughts? I do not. All right. I love talking. I love talking collecting. I love talking um, <laughs> video games in general, like, or collecting and investments and all that stuff so um, I'm um glad we did this episode i think next month's episode we're gonna keep a, a as a surprise for now it is a surprise um we are working on trying to get a special guest i don't know if that's going to happen next month or not but sometime if it future. does you'll know Hopefully. sometime in the future Fingers crossed. yes <laughs> yes and this is all this is all adrian so bug him for answers don't come to me so just saying I, I i don't think it'll be a problem but i think i think if we're able to get them on uh people are going to be really excited and that's going to be a great episode so stay tuned cool. for that. heck yeah all right well with that thank you for watching uh or listening whatever you prefer um but again uh that video that adrian mentioned earlier uh the link will be in the comments or in the, in the description down below so check it out it's it's about an hour long so it is a bit of a watch but honestly it was it was super interesting um just to kind of get the uh the perspective uh, and it's got some you know big name collectors in there uh pat the nes punk is, is a pretty prominent uh feature in it uh but it's 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 really well done well put together well researched and um a lot of things that I, I didn't know uh, that were happening behind the scenes that's uh, pretty pretty fascinating uh, and, and quite frankly unfortunate in a lot of cases. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens though. But uh, with that, this is the Pixel Perspective signing off. My name is JJ. I'm Adrian. And as always, keep on moving.